All right, so we are out here at the uh, TAC Games Sniper Challenge. So we actually signed up for the Recce Division. This is their new division. And uh, that's actually what got us to come out here was it was a great way for us to test our LPVO optics on our, you know, our short rifles. And so well, I have a short rifle. Taylor has a 16-inch. But we'll talk more about gear, what I brought later. Um, I'll tell you guys what I brought and then some of the new stuff I got just for this uh, event and show you what I'm using. But... Right now, um, Taylor's got the spotting scope, so we're gonna go walk the stages. So we'll bring you guys along with that. Probably won't show you all of it, it'd be kind of boring, but we're just gonna go through, we gotta range all of our targets, get an idea for what the stages are gonna look like, and then try to come up with sort of a game plan that we can go over tonight. All right, so we gotta walk all the way down to the first stage, so I might as well make use of this time. So the thing that got me excited about doing this was the recce, recce division. So it's without all the movement, without the plate carrier, um, it's kind of like a, Sort of like a two gun or like a three gun, but more long it's range. Like a, it's like a PRS two gun. Yeah, like a PRS two gun. So it was a, a fun way to still shoot pistol, um, start to use or figure out some of the skill sets that I learned from Bruiser and from Ridgeline. And one of the things Joe said in the video we did was like, he didn't realize how much he didn't know until he went to a match and got his teeth kicked in. And so for me, that's kind of like where I'm at is, you know, I've been really geeking out over this long range stuff and, or precision or whatever you want to call it. And just trying to learn as much as I can. But at some point you, you gotta get out and put metal to metal or metal to meat as Joe says, and try to figure out and get your teeth kicked in a few times to Kill see what you don't know, huh? Metal to meat, who are you killing? We, we are in Kansas and there's not a whole lot of cops out here, so. <laughs> we have that email still, right? <laughs> yeah. Email. Uh, yeah, I got that email, it's fine. I got, I got an email that says I'm clear to do it, so it's no big deal. Yeah, I um, it, but. <laughs> but anyways, that's that's what got me excited to come out here and to get out of my comfort zone and, and try to um, push that 12.5. So I'll be running the 12.5. We'll talk about that later. But um, just to try to figure out where my limitations are and where I need to get better specifically. Like I already have kind of some goals in mind, but I'm sure this will make me very aware of other shortcomings that I have. So that was kind of my motivation for, for doing this. And then Taylor was like, well, I'm going to win. So speaking of shortcomings on our right, what you're about to see is all of the shortcomings. These are all the barricades, super fun guys that everybody loves Bicycles. to shoot off of. Punisher skull. Uh, if you shoot right off that, you get a free blue line hat. <laughs> Just saying. <laughs> so we got a little distracted during the stage planning because we were talking with Jeremy, the match director for the tactical games or the sniper challenge of the tactical games and we got talking and catching up with some old stuff we're old friends uh, but also the sun started going down on us a little bit sooner than we were expecting so we had to kind of rush through so we didn't get to capture all the content we wanted uh, but we got prepped for the the match we got our distances and then we figured out kind of a rough plan or idea of what we thought we wanted to do for the match from there we went to the zero range where we confirmed our zeros and just checked where our cold bores were so we would know for the next morning just so that we would be as prepared as possible. Now, I didn't get to talk at the range or at the hotel about the gear that I took to the, the match and why I did some of that, but uh, we, just, we just didn't have time. So I wanted to cover that here and talk a little bit about some of the gear I took with me because um, I know you guys are gonna have questions. So obviously I took my 12.5, my Novesky 12.5. So this is gonna be the same thing that I talked about in the SPR video. I'll link it up here. You can go watch it there. You can also go watch the video, uh, the full review on this this gun. So nothing has really changed there aside from thanks to Bauer Precision, who are sponsors now of the channel and who actually made the series around this competition happen. So they were able to help me get a Surefire RC2. Um, they help take care of all the paperwork. They have the Silencer Shop kiosk there. They do all that stuff. They have a huge selection of suppressors. So if you're looking for NFA items, specifically cans, go check them out. Um, they are big supporters now of the channel. Check them out on Instagram and and you can use average six, it'll save you some money there. But thanks again to Bauer Precision for helping get that taken care of. And we'll be doing more suppressor stuff with them. So if there's something specific you wanna know or a specific can you wanna know about, leave it in the comments down below so we can make sure that we include that in the upcoming videos. So moving on to belt, because this is the sniper challenge, it's not like a PRS match where it's just rifle. It is both pistol and rifle. So we had a few stages that included both pistol and rifle, and then we had two stages that were pistol only. So you do have to have some sort of a belt to carry your pistol with you at all times, and then any other gear that you may want. Um, so there, there is a breakdown. Again, another video you can go watch on my belt and how I have it set up. Basically, entirely the same. The only thing that I changed was this pouch right here, which is the uh, JTAC pouch uh, from Spirit of Systems. And it, it just has the pistol and mag insert on the side, but it has this pouch here. And what I do is, or what I did is I threw my rangefinder and my Kestrel in there along with a little notebook where I took all my 
my notes for each stage so that way I kind of had an idea what I wanted to do. Um, all that was just sitting in here, so that makes it easier for me to uh, access as we're running around without having to dig in my bag for those items. Something else I got a bunch of questions on was the bag. So this is the bag I take with me. Um, I take this bag with me usually when I go to courses, when I go to matches, when I go out of town, whatever it is. Uh, it's just a quick, easy way for to carry all my gear. This is the Everly Stock Bandit. Um, I've used it for a lot of things from everyday carry to just like a gym bag to whatever. Um, it's a very useful bag because you can kind of scale it up or down for the things that you want or need. Uh, so what I've done is I've uh, thrown a Spiritus pouch on the front and in there I moved all my tools from inside the bag to here to quickly access. So if there's something that I need to adjust or change, I can do that without having to dig it out of the bottom of the bag. Because um, on the inside of the bag, the way I have it set up is that the stuff that I need most quickly is sitting on top. Everything else that I don't need as quickly is sitting on bottom. So the tools were usually on bottom. I don't need them a lot, but when I do, I have to dig everything out of the bag. So uh, it was just easier to move that to the front and then this front little pocket in here. Um, I've got some lens cleaners. This is a thread protector for when we take the top cap off of or top turret cap off on the Night Force. Some extra ear pro and that's about it in there. On the inside is going to be my fix it sticks, multitasker, multi tool, a few other small little tools for optics and, and whatnot. I like this bag because I have this little, it's got this like kind of kangaroo pouch in the front where I can throw a, a raincoat in here, helmet, whatever else. Uh, I can uh, adjust these straps and it'll it'll fit all kinds of stuff in there. Uh, usually I throw a water bottle or snacks on the side. On this side, I've put a Theorem cell vault and this is just for extra batteries. Everybody's always coming to me asking me at range days, hey, do you have batteries for my ear pro? Do you have batteries for my optic? Do you have my batteries for this thing? So inevitably I end up being like the range mom and I'm like, go to my bag and you can get batteries out of there. On this side, I've kind of rigged up a way to mount a tripod. Uh, the big thing is there's not really a strap that goes around to hold the tripod in place, so it'll just fall out. So what I've done is I took some bungee cords and uh, I just attached them together on here and they cinch down on each other and hold my uh, really right stuff tripod in there. Now, I did just get this right before the the match. Oh, loosen that. So this is going to be the um, is it the 34 model? I'll leave the model right here, whatever model it was, I forgot. But when it comes to selecting your tripod there, these are gonna be probably some of the more expensive. You can check out the Two Vets tripods, the Vortex Radians, uh, I believe is what they're called. Those are also really good options. Also ask uh, Bruiser Industries, he has a lot of really good recommendations. You can also use photo tripods. There's a, a bunch of options out there, you don't have to go with this, but I was like, if I'm gonna get a tripod, I'm gonna get the one I really want. But I got this size because of how compact it scales down to when you collapse all the legs, the payload capacity, and then just the overall height, right? So it allows me to do everything that I wanna do with it as far as whether I'm using it for uh, a tripod for a spotting scope, using it to shoot off of, or using it as a support tripod. I can do all of those things with this tripod. So that's why I went with this link, uh, length. The only thing was, was like I had to find a way to attach it to the bag. Um, after the match, I got tired of actually carrying this thing around. So I was like, I gotta find a way to attach it. So bungee cords are the way to go. So if you have a, a, a Everly Stock Bandit bag, that is an easy little hack to put those on there. Moving to the inside. So as I said before, everything inside is packed from what I need access to the fastest will be on top. And then less the less important things, things I don't need very often are at the bottom. The other thing I like about the bandit bag is that I have a little carabiner here so I can hang it either on my truck or from the tripod. And what that allows me to do is I can open up just the top to get whatever I need out of, out of here. Or if I want to open all the way, I can open this all the way. So inside you're gonna find um, I carried ammo with me for the day, a couple extra bags in case one of them went down, and then whatever bags I was using. This is just an Armageddon Gear rear bag. I ended up not using this. I don't actually use this bag very often, but I took it just in case. You never know. There might be some unexpected situation where, you know, you'd be like, oh, I wish I had that bag. And it didn't take up that much space, so that's why I took it. But I'm changing some of the bags that I use. I've got more on the way, so we'll talk about that in an updated video. Uh, the bag that I ended up using every stage almost every stage, was the Schmedium, and this is their Schmedium Game Changer uh, with the wax canvas. Phenomenal bag, love it. Uh, used it a whole a ton. Um, in, inside the the uh, Bandit, you'll find there are some compartments. They have a little spot in here for a water bladder. I don't use it for that. I don't carry water bladders. It's just not my thing. On this side is a uh, big organizer, and what I have stuffed in there 
is a Noveski. This is their kind of windbreaker. Uh, I've stuffed that in there. One, because it gives some shape to the bag. Uh, two, it gives some cushion. So if I ever need to use the bag as a support, it's just a little bit more material in there to kind of fluff the bag up to be able to use it how I want to. Also, there are times where you just may need a windbreaker while you're on a range. So that's why I put that stuffed in there. Up here, I've got an extra BCG. It's just an old habit uh, from when I travel out of town. Uh, a lot of problems that, that go wrong with guns usually can be solved by swapping out a BCG. Sharpie, and then in here in the bottom, in this bottom compartment, is just a very basic cleaning kit, um, and then some rags, suppressor mitt, and some lube. So that's what I keep inside the bag on the inside of it. And then in here in the top pouch, uh, again, things that I need access to very quickly sit on top. Uh, we have my armband from Sunrise Tactical, right? I think Sunset, I don't know what it's, Sun something. Rangefinder from Vortex, my little notebook and pen, some extra index cards, and then my Kestrel, and some extra Ear Pro. So all that sits in there on top so I can access that. And then what I usually do or what I did at the match was take the range fire, the Kestrel, put it in my belt like I talked about, and then throw my armband on and I'm good to go. Uh, I do want to talk about the armband really quick and how I got it set up. There are other options out there that are smaller form factors. So if you want something more minimalist, by all means, there are better options. Like uh, Joe even recommended I not get this because it's just, there's a lot going on. But for me, how what I wanted and just like the creature comfort and the confidence it gave me to just wear this, Made more sense for me, that's why I got it. But anyways, it has these little um, inserts so you can put whatever cards you want in there. I leave a blank index card on the front and what I do is on the front, I'll write my yardages or stage plan for that particular stage and I can update just those numbers or what I need to dial to, whatever my wind calls are, whatever. That's what goes on here. On the inside, uh, again, I have hard cards in here so you can replace these, you just slide them in and out. I got a bunch of extras behind it. And then I used a wet erase pen so that way it wouldn't wipe off real quick and um, then you just get some water or whatever, wipe it off when you're done. But that's how I had this set up. And on the inside, I had some, my goals for the match. So uh, that's kind of where I wanted to end this video is like what my goals will, what my goals were going into the recce division and this particular match. So this was my first ever PRS style match or precision or long range match that I've ever done. So um, I wanted to set realistic goals for myself. Um, I didn't think winning would be an option. It was more so about testing gear testing my skill set and seeing where I'm at, like setting a baseline so I know where to go from here. So my first goal was to shoot 75% of whoever got first. And I felt like that was a realistic goal to go after based on the training that I've had with Joe and the conversations we've had and then the conversation training I've had with Ridgeline and some other guys. So uh, I did that and I actually accomplished that goal. So I was super excited about that. I ended up shooting, I think 75 point something or 76 point something of first place, uh, which got me fifth overall, uh, which wasn't bad. So fifth out of, I think 30 guys, 30, yeah, 30 or 30 something. Anyways, uh, so that was the first goal. Second goal was to make good win calls. Did not achieve that one, did not make good win calls. Um, we will talk about that more in the match recap. Um, being consistent. Again, something I didn't do, I was a little inconsistent in my approach to stages and a little inconsistent in my performance on stages because one of the struggles that I have at matches is I get bored sometimes and I kind of check out mentally. So I will go into a stage not as focused or prepared as I should be. So that's something that I will be working on for the future. Um, and then building good positions. Now, that one I did achieve. I felt really good about the positions I built. Um, I felt confident about them, very comfortable, very stable. And again, we'll talk more about that in the, in the recap video. But um, I had that for me in there. So I have my, just a quick reminder, what my goals were. So that way I'm not, you know, getting ahead of myself um, and not getting down on myself too. Last thing that I don't want to forget about is that we did use a Vortex Razor spotting scope. I forgot which... 27 to 60 is what this particular uh, Vortex Razor spotting scope is. The only thing that we're gonna change is we're gonna try to get the IP swapped out to, to have the mill reticle inside. It makes it a little bit easier when you're, to get a sight picture of targets and what your holds are gonna look like on winds, on wind calls and uh, the size of the target. So something that we'll try to get changed out before the next match, but uh, yeah. And then use the uh, Vortex tripod with that, but I'll probably swap this out for the really right stuff. So one one final note on gear. Um, if you're looking at shooting the recce match going in, in the future, you don't need all the gear that I showed. Like you don't need the bags. You don't need the tripod. You can build the same positions without those. I will say it's gonna be pretty vital for you to have a bipod because we, sh we shot about half the stages from prone. You can build the same positions that we had that weren't prone without a bag. 
but having a bag helps though for sure. You can also shoot all the stages without a tripod. However, there are some stages where if you're used to shooting with a tripod as a rear support, it would be beneficial to have it for sure. But I, I had just gotten the tripod before the match and just didn't have enough time practicing with it to feel comfortable to implement it in a lot of the stages. So I decided not to use it on any of the stages, but it, it was something that if I needed to or felt like it would be a good benefit, I would I definitely would have used it. So um, if you have questions about gear for the recce division of the tactical games, leave it in the comments down below. If there's something else you want to know more about the gear, leave it in the comments down below. Make sure to like and subscribe. Karate chop the bell to get notified every time I upload a video, and I will see you guys in the next one. What was that? What was that, Taylor? I'm talking to this fat bitch right here. <laughs> Look at her fat ass on there. <laughs> Why is it so dark? Oh. Oh. <laughs> See the color of my skin? I can absolutely say that. The competition is fucking exactly right. <laughs> the reason why I won it this time is sarcasm. <laughs> it's to make fun of the fairy down the road. <laughs> you do good off that, you get a free blue line hat or some shit like that, probably. He just he just made that joke in my video and he's making it again. Yeah, well, I make videos and everybody's jokes. Hey, by, you make videos and everybody's jokes? You see you guys inceptioning each other? I remember the first time have, I talked. Has this audience met this did you, one? Did you tell him about the time that you asked the guy the question and he answered? And then he asked you a question and then you asked him the same question again? Listen, I may not be the <laughs> smartest, but I don't have to be the dumbest. Wait, what? <laughs>